Yes, thank you very much for a kind, uh, kind introduction. So I'm really happy to speak about um, my a, a talk today. Um, a, my, my topic is uh, the mobility for the uh, relatively small scale uh, robotic vehicles for the scientific and also commercial mission purposes. So um, yeah, this is a one snapshot picture from my laboratory. And so yeah, that in, in, in the center of the table, uh, we have um, the, our robot that, that we are um, uh, developing uh, this size of a robotic vehicle for a possible uh, lunar mission in the near future. Um, then we have a number of the um, and good students from all over the world. Um, so the first, I would like to uh, mention about uh, the mobility system in general. So then I, I'd like to make uh, some um, the uh, upgrade from the uh, our uh, uh, technology development. And then finally, I'd like to mention uh, some challenges to the commercial missions. So um, I always like to show uh, these uh, 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 video clips and that include the different designs and two wheel or four wheel and six wheels and even the truck vehicles. So um, I've been um, developing a number of the different designs and conduct the uh, outdoor field testing time to time. So um, let me speak about this um, the unique design that is an articulated truck robot. So, um, so far that this kind of robots are not really uh, ideal for the space missions, but uh, well, this robot is, is um, perceived as a very good design for the search and rescue operation, the uh, terrestrial applications. And uh, this is a slightly improved uh, model in the 2009 that named Queens. So this shows a, a quite high uh, adaptivity on a rough terrain. And uh, eventually uh, this model uh, was um, uh, used in a Fukushima uh, a power plant accident that happened in 2011. So then um, uh, after a few months of the, 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 uh, this uh, accident, we uh, made a custom model for the, this uh, Fukushima environment. And then uh, yeah, we integrated a number of the sensors and on board, then uh, yeah, we deploy and uh, this robot and uh, successfully for the initial in investigation of the, the power plant buildings that has a very uh, nice capability for the very steep stair climbing uh, <coughs> functions capabilities. Um, but uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, maybe the, this kind of the uh, articulated truck system um, is used for the space missions someday, but uh, yes, this is not my main topic today. So now uh, I would like to focus on the wheel vehicle. And actually uh, this is the vehicle uh, of the team Hakto's challenge of the uh, Google, challenge to the Google Luna X Prize. So we started this activity back in, in 2010 and 11. So then a few years later, we developed this uh, model, which is called the pre-flight model. Uh, which has uh, mostly that composed of the space uh, qualified or space problem or space friable materials and components. But uh, the, the basic design is uh, quite simple. That has uh, just uh, four wheels, and no steerings. So we use uh, the skid steering uh, uh, strategy and that minimizes the number of the actuators. Then uh, this is a uh, uh, um, uh, one uh, scenario demonstration, we assume that the landing vehicle and then after landing that we open the door of the container and this robot touches down on the surface of the moon, hopefully. And the lunar surface that we uh, understand that the com mostly composed, covered by the soft granular materials. So then uh, this kind of the wheel um, and mobility and some up here, down here, um, environment and then uh, some uh, obstacles, scattered obstacles, and uh, then uh, uh, taking um, um, uh, avoidance maneuvers. That is a very basic uh, design concept. So then uh, we um, and prepared relatively large diameter wheel and then uh, yeah, having uh, uh, lugs or grousers uh, to maximize the traction. And then, um, yeah, we also demonstrated a, um, a steep slope climbing. Uh, which is about the uh, 30 degrees inclination. But um, yeah, if we look at the close leader, uh, the, this just this day, um, the 
this sand slope is a little bit wet, so have uh, moisture. So in a completely dry out environment, uh, we will uh, experience a much, much more difficult situations, but uh, these uh, designs allow us on the steep slope climbing uh, very nicely. So, um, you know, we also demonstrated uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, exciting things. Here is uh, the main rover, but here, please look at um, this part. We have a two-wheel small rover, and uh, these two rovers are connected by thin tether. So that is a, a tether-based deployment of the small rover for the down cliff um, exploration. So the, this is, is uh, we are expecting to uh, visit the uh, cold uh, permanent shadowed area, for example, or uh, interior of the uh, lunar caves, uh, peaks and caves. So uh, we are, um, are looking at that, that kind of um, uh, options for um, near future missions. So, but uh, speaking about um, the uh, pit and cave uh, exploration, and this is a, a, a typical scenario uh, of the, the pit um, um, exploration. So the, this uh, down cliff, uh, the, the you know, uh, geological observation is, is quite um, um, important and exciting. So then for this part, they, yeah, of course, that, uh, my, uh, our, the previous slide is some kind of the uh, uh, axle rover. Uh, 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 designs, but um, um, the, these days uh, we are also working with a uh, legged robot system for the much more um, the uh, safe and the careful and uh, down cliff. And maybe it, after the, um, the, uh, uh, this uh, exploration, uh, the up climbing uh, uh, actions uh, are necessary. So uh, we are developing um, yeah, uh, a robotic system that make uh, this kind of activities. So then currently that we are um, developing um, relatively small, lightweight, compact, but yet capable uh, climbing robot for the uh, cliff su surface of the cliff. And then um, well, the idea is quite um, straightforward and normal. Uh, we, uh, first we try to develop the uh, grip plus system uh, that uh, has mechanical claws. Uh, actually that we use uh, fish hooks uh, you know, uh, for this, uh, the first prototype. And uh, the function is uh, just a simple uh, open and close, but uh, it shows nice adaptivity for the uh, such an artificially uh, prepared the uh, demonstration uh, wall. And then, um, yeah, we are making uh, this kind of the uh, experiment. So then, um, yes, this is um, a relatively recent um, uh, demonstration and that uh, we, uh, use a uh, bouldering hold uh, for that is um, commonly used for the sport climbing kind of uh, or bouldering uh, things so um, the yes um, uh, our robot and the, with four legs uh, makes um, yeah somehow a nice uh, climbing and but, but honestly speaking that the, for this um, demonstration a couple of years ago uh, that everything was conduct, control was conducted uh, manually. So very skillful student uh, made it uh, work, but uh, currently we are challenging the um, autonomous, uh, how to um, make uh, uh, this action um, um, for the autonomous control scheme. So um, just, uh, this is the, the, the current activities and one of my PhD st student, uh, Mr. Uh, Uno, and then uh, the other uh, students in my laboratory. Um, so the uh, speaking about uh, such a realistic cliff climbing, that, that is very different from the, the standard, you know, uh, the working robot, um, the strategies that are mostly assume that it will be flat surface. So then um, um, the choice of the, um, the, the contact point or grasping point is not a matter, but um, the in a real uh, uh, wall climbing or bouldering uh, kind of activities and where to grasp and where we can uh, grasp and where which grasping points are um, located in a reachable uh, area. That uh, really matters. So, so then uh, now we are developing the algorithms uh, to make it work nicely. And so then, um, yeah, in, a, in the um, 
also we are working on a practical implementation and the robot uh, robot has a uh, working robot has a uh, onboard camera and get the 3D geometry of the environment. Then I, I try to identify that the which points are, are graspable and which is the best, uh, which are the best points for the grasping. Then, then based on the, uh, such and such um, the analysis, then uh, the, our, uh, the, you know, uh, trajectory planner make uh, the, the planning and where is the best position to grasp. So um, this is an ongoing research. So then, um, yes, uh, I'd like to extend the, some of the ongoing research stuff. Um, the one is uh, Terra Mechanics. So that is quite important for the, the wheel robot. So the, as um, um, many of the previous speakers mentioned about the slippage and the wheel slip, that is very critical uh, for the planet, lunar planetary missions. Then uh, um, uh, we already know that um, the, the uh, uh, dogs or grousers um, attached on the surface of the wheel and that can um, the, yeah, significantly increase the, uh, the capability of, of the traction and uh, was simply just grabbing or uh, biting the, the you know, soft soil and the uh, surface. So then uh, uh, we also uh, made um, very simple uh, um, you know, testing uh, during our uh, team Hactos challenge. Um, so um, this is about the 20 centimeter uh, diameter wheel with a number of the browsers, very thin, very lightweight, and uh, made by a uh, very uh, high uh, strength plastic material. And we put the uh, four stroke sensors and uh, then we make a measurement. So and then we use uh, the, uh, some type of the, the um, soft uh, um, soil as a sample. And then um, as an extensive study, uh, we are also making uh, that kind of analysis. So we take the images, sequence of the images for the cross section uh, of the soil and just uh, underneath the wheel and with grousers. So then um, um, by using the PIV uh, technique, uh, particle image velocimetry, and uh, that is a computer vision uh, based te uh, technique. And in, with this technique, we can get the, uh, we can track all the, the pieces of the, the soil particles. So then uh, um, the, yeah, take a differentiation of the different frames, uh, we can get a vector, flow vector of the soil motion. So that, that is a, a kind of uh, the brand new technique, um, but uh, well, we can find that some of the uh, uh, papers um, um, in literature. Um, so uh, there are some, um, some groups and doing this kind of activities in the world. Um, so then uh, this is uh, some typical example of the flow vector um, uh, analysis. So then uh, uh, we believe that uh, by this uh, observation and analysis, uh, we can better understand the uh, soil mechanics uh, in a given uh, conditions. So then uh, we can get uh, some uh, the, um, um, the defined the slip line. So we can um, uh, obviously find the boundary uh, of the, the moving soil and the not moving the soil area. So then uh, this thickness or the area of this uh, the uh, yeah, moving soil area uh, uh, will um, contribute to, to the, uh, the traction effort. So then uh, we also conduct the uh, a discrete element method uh, approach. So this is a computer simulation um, the, to simulate the uh, motion of the soil particles underneath the wheel. So the, the principle, the physics is, is a little bit simple. We have just uh, the number of the uh, particles and with mass and the uh, frictions and we evaluate the contact force and all the friction stuff. And of course the gravity is also considered. And then we can make a such a um, simulation. Then uh, you know, uh, apparently we got um, the soil deformation, soil flow, and also that we uh, find the track or trace after the wheel traveling. Um, so then, um, yeah, this is an, an also the ongoing uh, study in my laboratory. So, and the uh, idea is, is uh, to compare uh, this uh, simulation and also the, our experimental observation uh, so that um, we can you know, better understand the 
um, the dominant uh, the parameters uh, to characterize the uh, this, uh, the soil particles behavior. And, on, and, then, and once we confirm that the models in a 1G environment, so we can try the different gravity um, environment in the computer simulations uh, for the um, lunar moon G or Mars, Martian G or also the gravity field in a asteroid uh, environment as well. So then uh, um, I also um, would like to touch uh, the uh, navigation system. So then um, um, the, this navigation program is, program is also very well known, very well studied, and also uh, nicely applied uh, for the uh, NASA's Mars rover. And visual odometry uh, is a great achievement. So, but just uh, I'd like to bring up the one interesting the, uh, camera system that is omnidirectional. And camera, maybe you know uh, this uh, got this stuff very well. So here is a mirror, and so the lookup camera. That we got uh, such a 360 degree and, and image of the um, environment. So I, I I'm frequently <laughs> using this uh, video clip. So maybe uh, you have seen it uh, the several times before. But uh, yes, this sequence um, is is um, amazing. Um, so um, yeah, this is the original circular image, and we can uh, transfer to the X Y coordinate frame, and very nice panorama. And then here we see the uh, some of uh, the yeah, uh, rock obstacles um, approaching, and then we see uh, some um, uh, mountains behind, and very far mountains and the horizons, and also the, some people are standing in the environment. So with a one single shot, that we can get everything. And however, yes, uh, currently yes, uh, this we see the two uh, big um, uh, rock obstacles, but but the the, the human can understand the, uh, these are rocks. But just uh, for, for the, uh, uh, the robot, it's just a uh, you know, um, um, gray scale pixels. And so then um, uh, they don't, um, uh, you know, the robot, robot cannot understand any meaning. So there's no meaning there. Uh, but um, yeah, for the uh, obstacle avoidance um, and kind of hazard detection and avoidance and maneuver um, purpose, yeah, we need to uh, add uh, some sensor. This is the very uh, the uh, first level solution. So, for example, the today the depth sensing is getting popular. So, get the distance and the height of the uh, obstacle. So then uh, we set some the threshold. Then uh, yeah, some obstacles uh, higher than the threshold uh, should be you know. Um, uh, marked and then I, I paid uh, attention and caution and also the uh, making avoidance the maneuver if necessary. So, but, but um, yeah, th this is uh, again a very primitive first step solution. But and today we can find um, the much uh, sophisticated uh, the, uh, technique or um, uh, approach. So that is a semantic uh, things. And so semantic segmentation and then also the train classification or uh, labeling and uh, stuff. So um, the, the currently, the, one of the PhD student of my laboratory is working on, on this this direction. And so, but the, uh, now currently we are taking the um, um, well-known uh, uh, approach, uh, learning with uh, uh, supervised learning uh, system, so that we prepare the uh, the template um, as a teacher or as a supervisor, uh, telling that uh, uh, this is sky, that this is far mountains, this is normal ground, these are the local obstacles, and these are the people standing. And so then after the uh, such um, the template or supervised uh, training, and uh, for, for this um, a process, uh, we uh, use a very well known today uh, the comb convolutional neural network. Then, after the training, then the system can uh, tell the uh, the object in the scene, the meaning of the object in the scene. So this is the input image grayscale, um, but the output and we tell the system can tell. Oh, here are uh, you know uh, somehow the dangerous rocks, and so we should. Uh, Pay attention to that, and then we see the people standing. We see the far mountains. Yeah, all the uh, semantics in the scene are automatically uh, separate, segmented, and uh, uh, labeled, labeled. So then our challenge, and uh, the current challenge is um, the after this uh, segmentation and stuff. Um, so that we just uh, pick up the um, the and 
potential hazard that is a big rock stuff. So marked by pink in, in this uh, the color uh, coding system. So just to pick up the, the, the uh, all those uh, the potential hazard then uh, um, and make, uh, taking a, 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 um, avoidance maneuvers and those, those uh, selected objects in the scene. So that, that is an, an also the ongoing uh, stuff. So then finally, I'd like to mention about the challenge to the commercial uh, missions. So um, now I'm, I'd like to bring up that this uh, Google Luna XPRIZE stuff that uh, gave us uh, the great um, opportunity and the great insp inspiration. And so unfortunately this was already closed, but um, that's um, a very good experience for us. So we joined this competition in the year of the 2010, and then we worked on the for eight years and for the step-by-step -step development of the, our robotic system that should travel on the surface of the moon. So then um, the, yeah, the finally the deadline was on the March in 2018, and two years ago. Um, then uh, um, by that time that we completed flyable, flyable uh, um, the, with a space uh, quality uh, mobile robot uh, with four kilogram mass. So um, I, I say that, um, we said that if somebody, yes, uh, uh, bring us uh, to the moon and uh, fly me, uh, fly us to the moon, uh, uh, that this robot certainly traveled, uh, worked well, but uh, you know, a coordination of the uh, transportation was not really uh, well uh, work out. So then uh, 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 we couldn't fly. But but uh, well, the good news is uh, that this model was accepted by the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in the United States, and so yeah, this will be displayed uh, as uh, one you know historical <laughs> object uh, in the museum. And so then um, yes, here is a, a core a point. So the um, as a team hacked up, um, the managed by um, um, company iSpace, the uh, we try to um, develop and uh, we try to minimize the uh, size of our logo. So just uh, and this it is simply related to the low cost purpose. So the considering the cost of the um, and transportation the uh, uh, to the moon. And the one kilograms cost um, the at least you know, one million or even more than US dollars. So you know, we initially started um, um, 10 kilograms, and so let's say 10 millions for transportation, but we down to four. So we saved 6 million US dollars and during our, our development. So um, and that's an, um, yeah, one um, uh, important logic for the, uh, the commercial missions. So um, let me summarize the uh, advantage of the small. So the uh, small payload, the small rover gives us uh, the low mass and low cost and the nature. So that is, um, you can um, um, uh, find the similarity to the uh, small sats and cube sat stuff that um, uh, drastically changed the, uh, uh, the business for the low Earth orbit uh, in past uh, uh, 10 years or past decades. Um, so that in, in the next decade that the small rovers will change the business of the uh, lunar planetary exploration, I believe. So as I mentioned, the transportation is, is a one major concern. And then uh, yeah, so the, basically that the commercial missions uh, they find the opportunity of the second payload opportunities. So there are the small uh, um, uh, uh, low mass um, um, designs uh, gives us more uh, opportunities. And then at the end, and we uh, can get the high frequency flight uh, opportunities. So not big one in the five, 10 years, but you know, every year, hopefully every month, we, we want to launch the uh, small um, the payloads into space or into onto the surface of, of the moon. And then um, and this also give us the opportunity of the, the multiple rover uh, deployment by a single flight. But of course, we have a, a big challenges. That is, um, the, the biggest one is um, the heat thermal stuff. So the small body uh, means a small heat capacity. So that uh, the heat thermal designs uh, becomes um, um, very difficult. 
and also because of that, the short mission life um, is, um, yeah, um, I think that um, particularly for the moon mission and the, um, the uh, overnight mission is, is very difficult. So the one lunar day, so uh, 14 days maximum, maybe 10 days uh, typical. That is, uh, yeah, just so we can set the, uh, this is a mission goal. So not for the overnight, not for the, the years of the operations, just for the focus on the short term, but very frequency, we can repeat and repeat and repeat the uh, small missions. That is uh, the basic the, uh, uh, idea. So, but just here, uh, I'd like to bring up on the one interesting, a challenge that happened um, the many, many years ago uh, with my student. And that is um, just a student project for the one kilogram payload. And but demonstrating the uh, rocket launch and the parachute down and touching down on the ground surface. So everything is, is completely autonomous and all inclusive. It includes the batteries and you know, onboard processors and navigation system and the uh, actuators, but uh, you know, amazingly, it can travel the, such a very yeah, a high speed, and it has a very good capability uh, to negotiate uh, some uh, obstacles. And then uh, um, actually, yeah, this is a, a um, terrestrial applications, the demonstrations, it has a GPS navigation system, and it arrives at a, a given goal, and so the, that is a student competition and, and that is a very nice for the education, but also the technology demonstration. So we can make, and this is more than 10, km, 10, 10 kilometers per hour speed. So uh, very fast. So, you know, such a capable robot uh, can be uh, made uh, just within the one kilogram. This is a very, very good um, the, um, uh, you know, showcase. And oh, this is another uh, demonstration and uh, the Clover uh, rover uh, uh, and system developed by Professor Nangatani and um, my colleague and some years ago. And this is for the volcanic uh, observation uh, study just uh, you know, deploy uh, the, this is case of the four wheel um, robot. Maybe, uh, actually, uh, this is uh, two, three kilograms. Uh, again, lightweight. And then the capability is uh, somehow limited, but um, yeah, and so yeah, for the simple um, uh, tasks, um, that, that works quite well. And just for the uh, um, uh, down slope and making the observation uh, around the volcanic area. So these two examples give us, uh, I believe that give you an impression that small robots are, uh, the functionality is limited, but yet capable um, to do some um, uh, nice tasks. So then this is um, um, the, the research activity and done by uh, uh, Dr. Mikhail Lenin. Um, who recently completed the PhD. Um, then uh, the, his stu PhD study uh, was uh, how to deploy the multiple rovers from the one single uh, landing vehicle. So then some, these red areas are the, um, the information obtained from the orbiting uh, orbiter. And then uh, yeah, these are the difficult to access or unaccessible area. And, but the, the, the mission is for these small rovers to try to visit and then make a complete coverage exploration uh, with a given time frame. So then, um, yeah, so this, uh, I believe that, yes. Um, this simulation is working. Um, so the, from the uh, landing position, the small rovers uh, are deployed, dispatched, then uh, you know, are visiting the, the, um, uh, and the, the cover, covering the surface. And then uh, the big obstacles, as, as I mentioned, already given, already known, but all these small black dots are the newly discovered and the small rocks, rock obstacles uh, by the onboard sensors. So um, in this way that these uh, multiple rover um, and staff can make a very detailed map building of the environment. So then uh, yeah, we can tell, uh, we can get some signature of the water, ice, or any you know, useful resources and, 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 you know, and distributed on the a given surface. So, and then this kind of mission can be achieved with a very simple, lightweight, uh, the mobile, uh, uh, robotic vehicle staff. So um, the, just I, I summarize um, the logic of the commercial space missions. So um, the, yeah, with the small rovers, 
and uh, we can make a quite um, agile um, 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 exploration and mobility, and we can conduct the challenging missions. And uh, all these missions uh, can be high risk, but we can expect high return. And the great advantage is we can repeat in a high frequency. So that's a uh, uh, big difference from the, you know, uh, the space agency. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. If you could, uh, so that, uh, yes. Okay. This is the very last um, slide. Um, okay. So um, thank you very much uh, for your attention. So um, yeah, um, thank you again.